All right, a bizarre week five in the NFL, but a really strong fantasy week for a lot of y'all out there. A bunch of guys balled out, but those of us not so lucky, stuck with disappointment after disappointment filling up our roster. We're five weeks into the season now. We're really getting into the thick of it. It's time to panic on these guys for the rest of the fantasy football season. All right, if you had the misfortune of waking up like I did to watch the Jets and Vikings in London, I apologize. Zero offense in that game. But my man, running back Brees Hall for the New York Jets, a major disappointment. Only 6.7 points this week. This is coming off a 3.8 point performance against the Denver Broncos. And it looks like Hall is just not involved in the offense whatsoever. It's really, really bizarre. Only 10 carries last week, 9 carries this week. And only no explosive runs at all. We come to expect Brees Hall to be that big home run hitter. We thought Aaron Rodgers back, soft fronts looking at him for the Jets. I mean, we had people drafting Hall at the 1.3, the 1.2. I even saw people taking him as the number one overall player with Christian McCaffrey's injury. And he just has not lived up to that. It's been a disaster. As a guy who has a couple of Brees Hall shares myself, I've been disgusted with what I've seen out there. It just, it doesn't look right. The play calling isn't great. Now, the offense did look better in the second half against the Vikings, but still doesn't fit the game script for them. Like, they just, all they do is throw the ball. They can't run the ball effectively. The longest run today was 10 yards, and that was like, it was a miracle. It felt like he got 10 yards. He's been helping out some in the passing game, but only four targets, three receptions for just 14 yards. That's not good enough for a guy you drafted to be your week in, week out 18 point a week guy he just has not been that all season and I think they like Braylon Allen the youngster better I mean literally the youngest player in the NFL Braylon Allen he feels like they like him more in this offense you know the quick dump off passes he's a little bit more explosive downhill north and south maybe the knee injury and the surgery is catching up to Brees you know normally we expect it to be you know it takes a year to get back from that knee injury and then the year two is when we see them explode but now there's been a couple of running backs, young running backs, who have blown their knee. They come back, you know, the year later, have a decent year after that, but then are really, really slowing down. Maybe we got to look at how we're doing these surgeries. I don't know, man. Are the running back's knees just that degenerative? But I'm not going to press the full panic button yet. It's not man overboard just quite yet. A soft matchup next week against the Buffalo Bills. Not the best run defense in the world. They've been pretty bad throughout the season. I mean, we saw Derrick Henry torch them. And, the you know, the carousel of backs in Houston had a really nice day against them today. But... I'm not going to fully sell here. I'm not going to completely panic, but I'm getting pretty worried, guys. He was Brees Hall was on the video last week. He's on the video again this week. I'm going to give him a 5.8 on the panic meter. I want to hold out one more week. If Hall doesn't have a 15-plus point game against the Bills, then I'm going to be in full panic, guys. I'm talking full panic, 9.5, 9.9, depending on what I see from Hall because he should have a very, very nice day against the Bills. Speaking of the Bills, Bills tight end Dalton Kincaid. Kincaid was expected to have a breakout season for the Bills. I saw people I'm drafting him as high as like the tight end three, maybe even the tight end four um, in some of those leagues out there. But Kincaid has just kind of been mad. The number one pass catching option we thought for Josh Allen, and it just hasn't been consistent. It hasn't been good enough. I mean, look at these targets, five, seven, and six, three, five, and two receptions the last three weeks, only 5.4 points against the Texans defense, who's not awful, but they're not great. They're just kind of whatever. And this is a team that is starting to struggle offensively in the Buffalo Bills. 10 points last week, 20 points this week. It's becoming a slog for Buffalo. Now, we're hoping that teams are going to start scoring more points so it could open up the passing game and we get a lot of those cheap, long receptions for Kincaid. But it just hasn't been there. He's not really finding the end zone. Had a touchdown three weeks ago against the Jags, but that was the mother of all beatdowns. In these games where they need to show up, where they need to show out, he just hasn't been there, and it's another tough matchup against a good Jets defense uh, in a game that Buffalo really needs to win. They've now dropped two in a row after starting 3-0. and They need to win that game against the Jets, and the Jets need to win that game to keep their season alive. So it's all on the table for everybody next week. I don't know if Kincaid's going to be able to do it. I would be getting pretty worried if I drafted Kincaid as my solo tight end, ready to rock and roll, figured he'd be a plug-and-play every single week with great production for you. 
I'm going to put my panic up to a 7.2 on Kincaid. I am very concerned if I'm a Kincaid owner. I just don't see it with this Bills offense. It's really looked bad the last few weeks. They don't have any sort of good protection. They aren't running the ball effectively. And it's just like, there's nobody out there. Like, it's bad, man. It's really bad to watch. Okay, Brown's running back to Rome Ford. Now, he hasn't been an awful performer the last few weeks. 10 points, 15.5 last week, 7.9 this week. But it just hasn't been what we expected when you drafted Jerome Ford. You were expecting a big season for a Cleveland Browns running back, at least for the first five, six weeks of the season until Nick Chubb worked his way back into the lineup. But this Browns team is flat out bad, man. They are easily one of the worst teams in the league. Deshaun Watson looked like he quit on his team today, which maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we get a new quarterback who isn't a piece of shit in that game and, you know, he'll be able to figure some things out. But other than that, Nick Chubb is coming back. That's the biggest thing. Nick Chubb opened up the practice window this week. Wanted to play, they said, but they wouldn't let him play. I think Chubb's going to be ready to go here, if not next week, then the week after that. And so that means Ford, who's already splitting time in this backfield, is going to see even less of a role, I think. And I just don't trust the Browns whatsoever. I don't think uh, Chubb coming back in is going to help this Browns offense a ton. They don't have a quarterback, and they, it's just... It's completely dysfunctional. Browns, the team that looked like they were finally getting past the dysfunction, are all back into the dysfunction. I want zero to do with this team offensively in fantasy. I don't trust anybody there. Maybe you take your flyer on Nick Chubb if you think, you know, Chubb is just going to be a monster and a man out there and just be chunking out big runs. But other than that, they just don't run the ball enough. Deshaun Watson can't read a defense. He doesn't like the running offense because, you know, I don't know, because he's bad. That's why. So I'm pretty worried about Jerome Ford, a low production guy, not going to get any more carries once Chubb comes back, if not lose some carries. I'm going to put my panic at an 8.3 for Jerome Ford and this Browns offense kind of as a whole from a fantasy standpoint. It's looking pretty grim in Cleveland once again. Okay, Bears wide receiver Rome Adunze. After like a monster kind of 23.4 performance, his breakout game three weeks ago, followed it up with back-to-back -back duds. Two points, nine points the last two weeks. And it's against really soft defenses. And we've seen the Bears offense kind of come alive a little bit. You know, 24 points last week against the Rams, 36 today against the abysmal Carolina Panthers. And Rome is just not involved whatsoever. We see DJ Moore getting involved. We're seeing the running game take over. Adunze just not that guy. He did have a good amount of targets. Six targets isn't bad for a wide receiver two slash three. However you want to look at it. I think he's probably the wide receiver two now with Keenan Allen doing God knows what. But it's just, it's not there. We don't see this big play connection that we were expecting to see with Williams and Adunze. I mean, Rome Adunze in college was a... I'm going downfield 50-50 ball. I'm winning that 50-50 ball. Here's a 40-yard chunk play. We just aren't seeing that. Now, the Bears aren't necessarily pushing the ball too much down the field. They don't want to risk it. You know, Caleb threw a lot of interceptions early. They're trying to cut back on that. They want to run the ball more, which is good for the Bears, but it's bad from a fantasy aspect if you're looking at Roma Dunze. I just think don't think this offense has enough passing attack to go around to two receivers DJ Moore is going to get the lion's share of this bad boy. He's going to get all the big plays. He's going to get the focus. And they're going to try and run the football. Maybe we see Cole Komet getting a good chunk of yardage there at the tight end spot. But as far as wide receivers are concerned, I think we oversold having three wide receivers on this new Bears offense with Caleb Williams. It just doesn't feel like it's ready. Now, Odunze is a rookie. We see rookies, you know, maybe start out a little slow and come on really strong as they get into the later parts of their rookie year. Kind of the opposite of what we see for other positions. Wide receivers start a little slow and then finish amazingly. I mean, I just think of guys like OBJ and Justin Jefferson, guys who didn't even play like the first three or four weeks of their rookie seasons, and then they come on like a tear. Not everybody can be Malik neighbors, okay? <laughs> Let's chill. So I'm not going to totally panic on Roma Dunze because I do like the way the Bears' offense is trending, but the schedule is going to get really, really tough coming up here. They got a couple of more cupcakes there. But then they get into the teeth of their schedule. They got to play six division games. The other three teams in the division look like they're pretty good. We got a high-flying Packers defense who turn you over. The Vikings defense might be the best in the league. And the Lions defense, they try. They try. So I'm not going to fully panic on Roma Dunze. I'm going to put it at 6.4 because you probably didn't spend too, too much draft 
capital on a Dunze, but you wanted more. You were expecting he'd be a nice steal for you, hoping you could get that kind of production. It just hasn't been there yet. And I don't love it with the way the offense has looked the last two weeks. Okay, staying in the NFC North, how about Packers wide receiver Dentavion Wicks? Wicks, my gosh, talk about the true definition of boom or bust. Zero points three weeks ago, 24.8 against my Vikings, and then four points today against the Rams in an offense that, you know, like they're missing receivers. Romeo Dubs is suspended. They don't know what they're doing. They're playing a bad Rams offense. They're throwing the ball all over the place. We got Tucker Graff catching two touchdowns, and Wicks has got seven targets for two receptions and 20 yards. It's just not good. He's kind of a bozo. Like, what are you doing, man? He's just not very good. He doesn't get open with consistency. He doesn't catch the football at all. It's kind of crazy how bad his hands are. But hey, he's, you know, he's he's interesting. He's a, one of them elite young receivers for Green Bay. I just don't think he's a guy worth playing at all. I mean, he's a really, really risky flex play. It just isn't worth it, man. It's like, like I said, it's all feast or famine. I think the Vikings game was just how the game script worked out. It, the score was 28 nothing. The backers had to throw the ball a million times. Still, 13 targets, five receptions. That's that's not good. Those are really bad numbers when you talk about a wide receiver. You want to see it, you know, one or two incompletions on targets. Unless you're somebody who's like a cra hot, crazy high volume, top end wide receiver like CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, guys like that who are going to have high targets, high catches and high yards. So maybe they could have an insane amount of targets, but not quite have as many receptions for there. Cause sometimes quarterbacks just throw it up to them and say, screw it. Dontavion Wicks is not that guy. He's not that guy for them. I mean, he was supposed to be easily the number two option today for green Bay. And it just wasn't there. The Rams defense isn't very good. Their secondary is bad. In fact, and he, I mean, he couldn't do anything. It was kind of crazy to watch the Packers offense work today. So if I got a Dontavion Wicks and I was thinking, Oh man, he's going to be a great flex guy for me. I'm all in on this Packers offense. I still like this Packers offense, but Wicks is just not him. Not him. I'm, I'm expecting Dubs to get back into it. He was, you know, freaking out about his looks. Yeah, stop throwing it to Wicks. Give it to Romeo Dobbs. I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy. I would be in full panic mode if I had any sort of reliance on Wicks. I'm putting the panic at a 9.1, man. This is, whoo, boy. I just don't think you can play him. I don't even know if you can roster this guy. Watch, I say this and he's going to drop another 20 bomb next weekend for them. But I just don't trust him whatsoever. It's all or nothing with this guy. And it feels like these Packers wide receivers, I don't know, man. Everyone tells me how good they are and they're kind of good. But none of them feel like they're elite. They're just kind of like all okay wide receivers. And none of them, you know, they always let me down. They always let me down in fantasy. Okay, how about Marvin Harrison Jr.? Now, this was going to be a lot worse after the first half of this game. Really strong second half from the Cardinals. I mean, I was writing up a manifesto on these Cardinals after Kyler Murray throws the pick to Nick Bosa. He quits on the play. I had James Conner on this list. I was freaking out. But the Cardinals turned it around. That's why we play 60 minutes of football. But MHJ didn't have a great day. You know, seven targets, but only two catches. And it's not like this Niners secondary is anything to write home about. It's kind of an average unit at best out there. This Niners defense isn't anything crazy. They're not an elite unit out there like they have been in years past. But still, two receptions, 36 yards, not great. What MHJ has been relying on is the touchdowns. You know, he's been catching touchdowns week in and week out. Ever since that week one dud, he was really good in week two. Week three and week four, all solid there. Like you said, 17.4, 15.5, only 5.6 today. I'm not going to super panic there because I loved what I saw out of the Cardinals in the second half. That took a lot of grit. That took a lot of guts. Even if Marvin Harrison wasn't involved in the comeback, still had seven targets. We talk about the target and reception share. The difference here is here, Marvin Harrison Jr. is one of those potential elite wide receivers. He is only a rookie. He is going to struggle some, but... Kyler's going to throw the ball to him. Like, there was a fourth down. He just chucked it up, said, hey, Marvin's out. Marvin's down there somewhere. And he caught him, converted the fourth down there. So I do like those signs. I don't love that he's becoming very touchdown dependent in an offense that I don't know how many touchdowns this offense is going to score. They seem to struggle to put the ball in consistently. But it was a really, really positive showing in the second half. So I'm not going to panic. I think we're just going to have to go through our lumps with Marvin Harrison Jr. You have to do that with rookies sometimes. 
He seems healthy at least. It's not like Malik Neighbors, who's going crazy and missed this this week with a concussion. So at least we got that going for us there. Don't panic if you're a Marvin Harrison Jr. owner. I know some people probably overdrafted him a little bit. We're like, he's going to be my true wide receiver one. He's going to be able to carry me this year. And he hasn't really been that, but he's been fine there. If, you know, you had him as your wide receiver two, if you drafted him, you know, later and you weren't expecting a crazy amount on him, he's been more than fine. I'm not going to panic too, too much on him. I'll put it up at a 4.8, though, just because I said it's been not a lot of yards the last three weeks. It's been very touchdown dependent, and you don't want to live in that zone when you deal with fantasy. Touchdowns are great. Touchdowns make points, but yards and receptions and targets are are what are going to get you consistent performances week in and week out. And finally, not due to his performance, Nico Collins goes down today with a hamstring, had two receptions for 78 yards and a touchdown. So Nico's been wide receiver one pretty much all season. He led the league in receiving yards. He's been outstanding, living up to the hype. And people out there tried to tell me Nico wasn't a number one. Nico wasn't a dude. Stefan Diggs is going to take his spot. No shot, man. Nico is a dog. Now, they've been kind of fuzzy on what we're looking at here. It sounds like it. I mean, it is a hamstring injury, but we're not quite sure how long it's going to be. Now, there is some optimism they shared with us. It sounded like he's not going to be out too long. He may not. He may even play this week. So that is the bright side. But you hate to see a performance like that. He was having two catches, 78 yards, 76 yards, and a touchdown in the first half. And he doesn't play the rest of the game. It just really sucks if you're a Nico Collins owner because he's been your guy all season long. And he's going to continue being your guy. There's no real panic here on Nico. I like what I heard from the update, but you don't love a hamstring injury on a wide receiver. Hamstrings can nag you. Hamstrings can catch up to you. And it can sometimes just, I don't know, man. It just gets weird with hamstrings. You don't want it to bother you all season long. But rest up. Hope you get better, Nico. I'm rooting for you. Okay, that's going to do it for us this week. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Who are you fed up with? What are you panicking on? I'll be answering your comments throughout the week on the video. If you haven't already, drop a quick like on this video. Subscribe to The Catch because we got all the daily fantasy content you could possibly need on this channel. I'm talking must start at right wide receiver, running back, tight end, quarterback for every single game, every single week. Your must start defenses, your must start kickers, your waiver additions, guys you should try and buy low on, trade for. Also live streams answering your questions throughout the week. If you have a roster question or anything like that to do with fantasy, just drop a comment on one of your videos. One of us will get to it for you guys. Again, let like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you all tomorrow.